This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up? What's up, everybody? Ricky Whitmer here, along with the one, the only, Brandon Swanee Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. And we are back for another edition of the Primetime Podcast, a special Primetime Podcast. You want to know why, Brandon? Do you want to know why? I do. You know what? Today, we're recording this on Monday, which means we have a new what? The Primetime Podcast has a new what? Has a new topic. Has not a new topic. A new logo. I didn't I didn't prep Brandon for this one. We got he the new logo. He never does. The he new logos does. launched today, so he, every he, podcast from here on out. I wasn't sent an out, email. I was not sent an email Everyone, about this. ever, every podcast from here on out has a new logo. This is the first podcast that we will have that featured the new logo before. And you also saw the new thumbnail that we have. So the rebrand has already begun. For MVP, Brandon. It's already begun. Hey, I'd like to be clued in on some of this stuff every once in a while. I'm going to uh, make a formal complaint <laughs> to the management team. Yeah. Let's make a formal complaint to that management team, see if it doesn't go right into the dumpster. <laughs> right in the dumpster right behind me. But new logos. We got great topics here. College football, college basketball, we always do. But we're staying in the world of college basketball today. Before I get into those, quick housekeeping for you guys. Number one, if you want to help support us, make this thing something special, go check out Most Valuable Podcast Patreon page, patreon.com backslash Most Valuable Podcast. That's where you can help us. You can get a little bit extra for doing so. Also, if you want to buy yourself an MVP t-shirt, that link is also down below in the description. We also have mostvaluablepodcast.com where you can you get everything basically. You get everything for MVP, audio, video, articles, no matter what we're putting out, that's where it goes. And then last but not least, if you're on iTunes, have Apple Podcasts, go ahead and give the Primetime Podcast a five-star rating. It would really mean the world to both Brandon and I and the rest of us at MVP. But Brandon, we got a jam-packed show talking about the Final Four. We're going to preview those two games. We have the Final Four teams in March Madness. Going to be taking a look at Louisville basketball. Is Chris Mack the right guy? for the Louisville Cardinals to take over for Rick Pitino. And then a fun topic at the end. Duke got bounced from the tournament this past weekend. We're asking the question, will Coach K ever win a national title again in his career? Should be a fun one to wrap up the show. But, Brandon, we have our final four teams. Loyola of Chicago beat Kansas State over the weekend. They will play Michigan, who beat Florida State over the weekend. An 11 versus a 3. Then we have the two ones on the other side. Villanova got through Press Virginia. I wasn't right about that one. I almost was. I almost was. But Villanova pulled away in the end. And then Kansas beating Duke in overtime. I know you're happy about that one yeah. being the North Carolina guy on the other side of the table. So we got Kansas, Villanova. We got Loyola, Michigan. I'm going to let you pick. Which one do you want to dive into first? The Ramblers and the Wolverines or the Jayhawks and the Wildcats? Let's talk about the intriguing matchup, the Ramblers and the thank Wolverines. You, thank you for talking about that. That's the one I would want to be the intriguing matchup, not the two number ones. Nobody nobody cares about two number ones. We care about Cinderella, right? Except for all the people yeah. over there that do care about him, yes. Pat, Patrick cares. He cares. <laughs> but yeah, talk, I mean, talking about the, the matchup that you have with Loyola and Michigan, it's, it's a huge matchup, mm-hmm. uh, and it's a huge... Uh, it's going to be a fun game. It's a fun game because, one, Loyola has finally put the uh, uh, the Missouri Valley back on the map. Mm-hmm. And and that's that, that's a Missouri Valley without Creighton. That's a Missouri Valley without Wichita State. And you're still talking about them. Yep. And they're in the Final Four. It's the first Final Four appearance in 55 years for Loyola. Mm-hmm. And... Ricky, I think that we can stop saying that this team is a Cinderella and say that this team is a legitimate contender. I, I, I'm, I'm serious. I don't I'm, know I'm, about no, that one. I, I do. I, I do know about it because the way that they have won their games, yes, some have been Cinderella-ish. Mm-hmm. But the reason I say I think we can stop talking about them as a Cinderella is the way that they played this game this past weekend against Kansas State. They end up winning the game. By 16 points. Mm -hmm. The game really at no point was all that close. They didn't need, you know, the the last couple of seconds to get a a last second shot off and win by one. They didn't need, you know, some huge clutch shooting at the very end of the game to make sure that they sealed it with uh, a couple of seconds left on the clock. They 
took it to K-State, the same K-State team that beat Kentucky. I, I mean, this is a very well-built, legitimate contender Loyola Chicago team. And I say that because, again, yes, you could call them a Cinderella after the win that they had against Miami. You could even still call them a Cinderella after the game that they had against the the next team that they played. Who who is the, who is in game two that they played? Tennessee. Tennessee. Yes, they're so Tennessee is so illegitimate. I forgot who they were. But <laughs> you know when they started when they played Nevada, mm-hmm. they they came roaring back against Nevada. Nevada, I thought was the better team. Loyola showed that they wanted it more, and then the way that they beat and played against Kansas State. This is a very, very determined Loyola team right now. And I think it's because no one believed in them. No one thought that they had it in them, that they could do it. But I want to say that one one stat that I was looking at, that the Ramblers, of the teams in the tournament, were the 25th best team heading into the tournament of all the 20 uh, uh of all the 64 teams or 68 teams based on elo ratings which is a measure of a team's strength based on a game by game game by game results mm-hmm. they were 25th best team yeah that's impressive no one would have thought that no one looked at them and thought that they really had any chance they have put themselves on the map as a legitimate contender in this tournament well, the thing I was looking for while you were talking was when you brought up the the NVC, the Missouri Valley Conference, um, I can't remember and I can't find it, but it was basically how many Final Four appearances the conference has had since, I want to say it was, oh shoot, like 2000, or in the last six years, so 2012, if my math is correct, if this is 2018 minus six, yeah, 2012, the NVC has two teams in the Final Four now with the Ramblers. Compared to the other Power Fives and the Big East in that time, Big Ten has four. The Big East now has three. Well, Big East was the Big East. SEC four, Big 12 one, Pac-12 one, ACC four. And if you look at it, counting Loyola, one of those Big Tens is Miami this year. One of those Big 12s is Kansas this year. So, I mean, the big thing I was looking at and someone else said was the Big Ten only has three. Pac-12 only has one. Like, compared to the other conferences, yes, the MC, MVC is there. But the only reason why when you said they're a real contender, I went, eh, not so fast, is because on the Final Four game that they'll play on Saturday, I believe they can beat Michigan. And the main reason they can beat Michigan is – a, they have the Cinderella power behind them. Yeah, they might not have the playmakers, as some say, to beat a Michigan. But with the what we've seen from this team, they're playmakers. That team is going to go out there. How many final shots have they made to win games? Almost every game has ended on a final shot dagger by Loyola to win that game. The thing that could kill the Michigan Wolverines is how inconsistent their offense is. Like, that Houston game, I was watching it. I was getting a little nervous, Brandon, because I was like, my, my champion can't go out before the second weekend. I can't have two of my final four teams die in the first two games of the tournament. But Michigan, they survived that game. The pool shot, they go crazy. Yeah, I know, I'm on the train of if Houston would have hit their final free, free, free throws, that shot wouldn't have mattered. Houston still would have won by one point. But then Michigan comes out that next game against Texas A&M. Everyone's like, oh, look at Texas A&M. They, look at, they routed North Carolina. Watch out for this team. They're down 92-53. to 53. What's going on here? Like, And that's the, which Michigan team are we going to get against Loyola? However, because of that inconsistency, Loyola can move on. My question for Loyola is can they beat... A Kansas, to me, out of the one seeds on the other side, Kansas would be the one I would want to see if I'm Loyola. Villanova is not the team I would want to see if I'm Loyola. If there's any team that can just dismantle this Loyola team, it's Jay Wright and the Wildcats. Because to me, the weaker of the one seeds would be Kansas because, yes, they're playing good right now. They've played well since the conference tournament. 
But we've seen Kansas at their worst, and we don't know if that's ever going to pop up either on Saturday or on Monday against Villanova. Well, I I think that if you're Loyola right now, you're obviously looking at the next game that's coming up for you, and you're looking at Michigan. But at the same time, also, if you're Loyola, you're saying, we don't care. Bring on whoever. Mm -hmm. Bring on whoever. It it does not matter to us because... We're ready for anybody. We're ready for anybody. And uh, an interesting stat is that teams seated ninth or worse mm-hmm. are 0 and 6 in the all final time four. in the national semifinal game. 0 and 6 all time. Never won. Could this be the first this, one? This could be. And the reason being is because Michigan has been so inconsistent with their shooting and their three point shooting. Mm-hmm. So. They, I am still surprised that they were able to get past Florida State. Truly, they went four of twenty-two from three, just Mo, overlooking Mo, the Houston one, going Mo, straight to Florida Mo, State. Mo Wagner was zero of seven. Matthews was one of five. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they were able to squeak it out against Florida State because they really struggled. They really struggled. I mean, Mo Wagner, one of your best players, goes three of eleven. From the floor, he does go six of eight from the free throw line, which was very helpful. But they are a team that will, like we've seen other teams in this tournament, Mm -hmm. live or die by that three. And they were able to still live, even though they they should have gone down probably against Florida State. Mm -hmm. But if they don't have that three ball working, it's going to be tough for them because the Ramblers, a slow-paced defensive-minded type of team Mm -hmm. will really cause some fits for Michigan. And I think really can could best them in this game uh, coming up this weekend. But it's going to be interesting. And Michigan can be on from three. I mean, I I think that's what I said the last time. That's what Michigan's game is. Mm -hmm. If they are going well from three, they're probably going to get things going everywhere else too because then that will bring up perimeter defense. It will open things up down low in the paint. But if they are struggling from three, it is going to be a tough day for the Michigan Wolverines. When I'm in against Florida State, they only had, what, four made threes? They went four of 22. Yeah. From beyond the arc, but the good thing for them, Florida State was also four of seventeen from beyond the arc, and that's the one thing that Loyola this year in the tournament they've been able to. Yeah, they only took eighteen threes against Kansas State, and I'm just looking at that one game, but they knocked down half of them. They haven't like the way I see this game going is from beyond the arc. Michigan's going to shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot, and might go four of twenty two. Whereas Loyola, hey, you know, we're only going to take about 15 to 18 three-pointers, but we'll make half of them. We'll make double what you make. So in that category, we're actually outscoring you when it comes to three. And the big thing for me that I'm looking at is Richardson for Loyola. The last game, six of seven from beyond the arc. Six of seven. If he does that again, then Michigan's going to have to do something. They're going to have to pull a rabbit out of their hat because Loyola is going to go dancing into Monday night. I was just going to say, the it's a funny story on Ben Richardson, truly the senior uh, mm-hmm. from Loyola, because he had, he played 29 minutes in the Miami game. He had no points. Yep. He plays 33 against Tennessee. He has six. Mm-hmm. 36 against Nevada. He has eight. He busts out of his shell against K-State when he needed to. Yep. Has 23, goes 7 of 10 from the field, like you mentioned, the 6 of 7 from 3. If Ben Richardson can duplicate the game he had against K-State, watch out Michigan because he could bury you. Let's move into the next game. And before we do, the one fact I want to throw out here is we have an Illinois-ruled Final Four, I'm going to say. Because not only is the Loyola Ramblers from the city of Chicago, from the state of Illinois. Each team has a player, and really Kansas's is the only one that's not a starter or have played in the tournament, I believe. But if you look at each team, Villanova, Jalen Brunson, Stevenson guy from uh, Lincolnshire, um, Illinois guy. Then you also have St. Rita guy here from Chicago. You got Charles Matthews on the Michigan team, and then Charlie Moore, who, like I said, hasn't played for Kansas, but a Chicago, Illinois guy. So, Really, not just Illinois, Chicago in general 
is ruling the final four, has their little fingerprints all over this final four. What are you thinking about Kansas going in for Kansas Villanova? Because to me, when I was filling out my bracket, the first championship matchup I had was Virginia over Michigan State. That was the championship I had. Then that Tuesday, everyone's talking about the injury that Virginia had. And I heard, um, I can't remember, Seth Greenberg, I want to say, um, on CBS, say that if you have Virginia in your championship, in your Final Four, this is a change-your-bracket kind of an injury. So for me, I was like, all right, I'm going to have them lose here. Michigan's going to my championship, but I don't want a Michigan-Michigan State championship. I just I don't want that. It, it doesn't feel right to me. So out of that bracket, I said, you know what? I had Michigan State beat Kansas. Kansas wins. Kansas wins. Kansas goes on to then lose to Michigan. Kansas has been proven the the Jay Williams thing of don't right now don't bet against Kansas. If it's Kansas versus the field, take Kansas, and that's how they've been playing so far this tournament, outlasting Duke in overtime. They're going up against a team that might not be the number one overall seed because that team lost to UMBC in the first weekend of the tournament. But Villanova is proving exactly what you said on the last podcast that we had. Jay Wright has his boys ready to play, and they might be the most talented team, the most the the best chance to probably cut down the nets out of the four teams we have this weekend. Well, uh, starting with Kansas and the Kansas game uh, against Duke, Kansas, since winning it all, winning it all back in 2008, mm-hmm. they have gone one in three in chances to go to the Final Four. And chances to go to the Final Four. So that changed this year, mm-hmm. um, obviously. But that also kind of tells you that this is a, a bit of a different Kansas team, and they're a different look Kansas team right now. And I am eating my words in terms of what I had said kind of throughout the season Mm -hmm. that they suck and that um, they're one of the weakest Kansas teams I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. They currently look like a, and thanks to Malik Newman, look like a very strong Kansas team. Uh, When Malik Newman scores 32 points and then all 13 overtime points, that's pretty darn impressive. But Kansas is literally at their strongest point all season long, and it's coming at the right time, and that's why Kansas is really dangerous. I, I you know, again, I, I really do hate to admit it, but they look solid. And you, you, I mean, you thought that I shouldn't say you thought that, but you think that oh, Svi Mikhailuk, he's like their three point the guy. But you. how about LeGerald Vic? Mm-hmm. Man, the clutch shots that he was hitting in the corner yesterday, along with Newman. The two of them went back and forth on Clutch City because they both did a fantastic job of hitting big shots when they needed to. Devontae Graham does an excellent job of kind of running the offense through him. They really, I'm telling you, they are a different team than they were even four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They look very good. They look like the Kansas teams of old right now. And again, that has a lot to do with coaching, but that also has a lot to do, I think, with the maturity uh, that this team has uh, right now uh, at this point in the season and, and the leadership that they have on this team. With with Villanova, with Villanova, the reason why I think that they could be beatable and the team that I think that would be able to beat them would be Loyola, believe it or not, mm-hmm. is because of the fact that Loyola plays that slower-paced defensive game. Yesterday, Villanova scored the lowest amount of points. I think that it's maybe scored all tournament long, maybe mm-hmm. all season long. Texas Tech just couldn't score themselves. Yeah. They missed probably 21 to 25 opportunities underneath the basket to score easy points, and they couldn't do it. They outscored Villanova 36 to 35 in the second half. They just looked like crap in the first half. If they if Texas Tech would have been hitting their shots and scoring, I mean they they could not get things going at all. They would have beat Villanova because Villanova was kind of stifled by what was a pretty good Texas Tech defense. The Red Raiders just couldn't hit on their shots. Well, I mean, and not just that, go back to a game before where West Virginia actually had the Wildcats on the ropes. They had them on the ropes and then late in that game it's like, "Well, all right, Villanova's up 10." Like then the thing with West Virginia is 
if you keep it like two point, three point, one point game, then West Virginia can come and steal it from you because they play so well at defense. Once you pull up by ten points, it's like, all right, I'm not afraid of your offense. Like at that time, I was like, all right, Villanova's got it. I was wrong. I was hoping West Virginia was win, but whatever. But they've had a close game the last two times. I would say with the Texas Tech, the if they would have hit their shots, but Kansas, except for I mean Clemson, kind of came like Clemson almost came back on them. Seton Hall really almost came back on them. What like in a minute ten, Seton Hall decided we're just not going to miss a three. We're just not going to miss a three. Like I remember sitting, we were out to dinner, Dave, Sean, and I, and we were sitting there, and Sean goes minute ten. Kansas has got it. Punch it. They're going on. I was like, not so fast. Not so fast. Time is not over. The fat lady is not officially singing. And then Seton Hall starts making shots, and I was really rooting for Seton Hall, but they didn't win. But Kansas has had some close games ever since that first win that they had. Really, even that Penn win. I know they won by 16, but Penn played them tough early on. The other interesting fact I love about this game the last two times these teams have met in the tournament, 2008-2016. The interesting thing both times, 2008, Kansas beats Villanova. I think that was a Sweet 16 matchup, if I'm correct. Kansas goes on to beat Derrick Rose in Memphis. Tear my little senior in high school heart out because I had Memphis winning it all. And if Memphis would have won, I would have won my bracket tournament. And then in 2016, Villanova, that one, I believe, was an Elite Eight matchup. Kansas loses to Villanova. Villanova wins the title in 2016. So if history's on the side, whoever wins this game between Villanova and Kansas will win the title. And the last thing I kind of want to mention here is kind of popular belief where let's say Loyola does beat Michigan because it would be unprecedented. An 11 seed in the national title, I'm throwing this to you because for me, I would love to see it. Basically, whoever wins Loyola, Michigan, that's who I'm rooting for on Monday. Michigan, because I picked them to win it all and I want to be right. Let's be honest. I like being right, especially at the end of the day. I thought you liked being wrong. I love being right. Everyone loves being right. And then Loyola, basically, because they're from Chicago and also... I love Cinderella's. Like, UMBC, yeah, I had picked Virginia. Who cares? I was rooting for UMBC late in that game that they would close it out. What do you have to say to the person that is like, you know what, the real national title to me, the game that's deserving of that is on Saturday between Villanova and Kansas and a Loyola whoever, Kansas, Villanova, it's going to be as bad as Butler, UConn. What would you say to that person? I would say that they're wrong uh, because Brunson and Bridges combined to go 7 of 24 from the floor on Sunday. Mm -hmm. They also went 0 of 9. DiVincenzo came in. He adds his 12 points, and he added a big 12 points. And Texas Tech was doing most things wrong on Sunday. They fouled way too much. They couldn't make their shots. They were missing bunnies underneath, and they didn't look like they had throughout the bunnies earlier part. Bunnies or bonnies? Because the bonnies went home earlier this time. Bunnies. <laughs> they were missing easy bunnies right underneath the uh, underneath the basket, and they weren't doing what they had been doing throughout the, the early part of the tournament. Mm-hmm. Villanova showed that it could be beat. They still also showed why they're a very good team and probably the best team in the in the tournament. But they show that they even the best team could be beat. Because even the best team anytime can be beat, especially if it's one night and that's all you've got. They can be beat. Kansas, they looked really good, but even, even with how good they looked, if Grayson Allen's shot goes down at the end the, on his lose. last second shot. Game's over and yeah. Duke wins. That almost that shot almost went in too. Bank it did. Just rolled out and it I did. was like, oh, I'm like, part of me is like, yes, Grayson didn't win the game. <laughs> I was very thankful because Duke didn't win yeah. the game. But I, I think that that's where you just have to say it's not going to be so lopsided mm-hmm. because I, I know that some would say, well, Texas Tech is better than Loyola. Texas Tech is even better than a, a, a Michigan. Some would say. Mm-hmm. But I would still say, look at, look at 
Michigan, if they're hitting their threes, they are super dangerous. Look at a Loyola. They play good defense, and they have a very efficient offense. I, I, I think that you, you can't then say that Villanova or Kentucky is going to run away with it over either one of those teams. We're going to see two very competitive games this weekend. We're going to see two co- very competitive teams play against each other in the championship game come next Monday night, and that is going to be a fun game with whoever is in it. So, no, we are not going to see a a lopsided Butler-UConn type of game. I just don't see it. I don't see how we can because on any given night, a team could come out and be awful. Even if they're the best team in the tournament, Mm -hmm. they can still be just as bad on one given night. And the team that was maybe off uh, everyone's radar could be the best team that night. So I don't think so. I don't think we're going to see a flop game. But let's end this end the topic with just plain and simple predictions. And the one thing before we get into our predictions, you know what I both love and hate about the Loyola run right now is they asked Sister Jean um, what she gave up for Lent, and she said, "Oh, I I gave up losing." See, I don't like that answer, Brandon. You want to know why I don't like that answer? Guess what ends on Sunday? Lent. Lent. Guess what is Monday? The national championship. So, really, I, I can already see it now. Loyola wins Saturday. Oh, they gave up losing for Lent. They lose Monday. Lent ends. All right, there you go. There's a loss. However, the thing that's helping them, Lent didn't start until March 6th. Their last loss was January 31st. Think about that. They haven't lost a game since January 31st when they went to Bradley to play the Braves. It's the last time they lost a game this year. My predictions are simple for this weekend. My bracket championship is still alive. I picked Michigan-Kansas from the beginning. I'm sticking to my guns, although I would not be mad if Loyola did win. I'm sticking to my guns. Michigan-Kansas is who we'll see Monday night. How about you? Who are you picking? Who are you predicting to play? I'm basically the same thing. Michigan-Kansas... Michigan wins on Monday. What about you? Who plays Monday? Who cuts down the nets? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Loyola uh, in the Loyola-Michigan game. I'm going to go Loyola because Michigan, in, in my mind, is too streaky. And the de- I think the defense from Loyola will be able to slow Michigan down. I don't think Michigan's going to get the looks that they want. Also, Loyola has been too efficient offensively, mm-hmm. and they've been too consistent. I think that Loyola, that that is going to be a recipe for success in that game. On the other side, I'm going to look at Villanova as well as Kansas played. Remember, Duke got off to two really slow starts in mm-hmm. both halves. They started off, I think, one of seven in the first half, two of nine in the second half. That's not the Villanova team that we're going to see. Villanova is the number one offense in the country. They're going to come out. They're going to show it against Kansas. Kansas, that's going to be a really good game. I think we're going to see Villanova. Loyola. Who, who's winning between uh, the Ramblers and the Wildcats then? Since our next podcast will be either Tuesday or Wednesday because we're going to watch the national championship game together. <laughs> it's a, it's, it, I think, I really do think that we're going to see if it's Villanova and Loyola, again, either way, whoever we see, it's going to be a fun game and competitive. I think we'll see Villanova, Loyola. Villanova is, I think, going to be just too much. They have so much experience. They have so much experience in that game. Mm-hmm. And and just being there just two years ago, Jay Wright is such a good coach. I, I think that, and, and not to see that Porter Moser is not, but I think Villanova, because of their experience and their senior leadership, I think they're going to be able to win that game. Villanova is going to be cutting down the nets come Monday. If Loyola... Wins on Saturday. I don't want them to lose on Monday. Like because they're a Cinderella. If they win on Saturday, I want them to win on Monday. Like I don't want like because the thing I don't want to see is I don't want to see Loyola go up against the Kansas or a Villanova, and then basically just get spanked up and down the floor. I don't you know think what we'd I mean? See that? I don't I, think I'm not, we'd I'm see not it. saying we will, but there's always the possibility. Like yeah. no one thought that. Michigan would come out against the Aggies and basically just backhand them right in their face and be over by halftime. 
Like, I remember, oh, the Loyola and Nevada game's really good. Let me check on this Michigan, and that game's over. I'm going to watch this game. <laughs> That's basically what I did at the Red Robin yeah. while uh, Dave, Johnny, and I were sitting there before Pacific Rim. But I don't want to see that. I also don't want to see, and this could happen anything, if Michigan, Kansas, Loyola, Villanova make it. I don't want to see, and I referenced that butler Yukon game, because I don't want to see another half of basketball like that, where Jay Will, Jay Will and all them are sitting at like halftime, and they're going, God, that was a bad half of basketball. Like That was probably the worst half of basketball I've ever seen in my life. I don't want to see that. I want to see, the out of these four, the two best teams, I want to see them. I think that's Michigan. And then on the other side, Villanova, Kansas, I don't even care which one comes out of that game because they both deserve to be in the national title. Loyola, though, if they make it, I'm going to become a huge Loyola Rambler fan just because you got to rep the city after you uh, your pick gets bowed out. But let us know what you guys think about these games this week, about who's going to win these games, who you got winning the national title. Let us know what you guys think down below in that comment section. 